Hello, hello. Looks like we're live. Uh, we're here with the Ubuntu Community Q&A. My name is Daniel Holbach, and I'm joined by David Kaye, who's waving from the area of Paris, right? Right, I am. Hi, everyone. Perfect. And um, yeah, we're going to be here for about an hour. We're going to answer all of your crazy questions. Um, if you're watching this on ubuntuonair.com, there is uh, Below the video feed, there's a chat widget where you just enter your, your favorite nickname, hit the connect button, and then you can talk to us. Um, you can ask all the questions you want. Just make sure you prefix them with question in capital letters so we can uh, more easily pick them up. While you're at it, um, you can also follow all the Ubuntu on Air accounts you can find. That way you get informed of, of new shows, old shows. You can watch all of them and, and put them into your calendar and, and whatever else, give us feedback as well. And if you're old fashioned like us, you can also go to the hash Ubuntu dash on dash air channel on Freenode um, on IRC and same thing applies there. Just ask your question there. It looks like we already have a couple of folks in there. Um, you can already start asking your questions while David and I have a bit of a chat about what's been going on in the past week. Yes. So, um, well, uh, Tuesday, uh, since uh, a few weeks, Tuesday is a special day because it's the day we are hosting uh, Snappy Playpens. So, Snappy Playpens are events uh, that are happening on uh, mostly GitHub and Gitter which is a GitHub power chat, if you want. And uh, we are meeting together with a bunch of developers uh, to create snaps. So everyone is welcome to this event, um, even if you don't know anything about snaps, because we are all here to learn and to, and to document and experiment and try crazy things with snaps. Yeah, that's so, oh, sorry. No, I was just going to ask Daniel, uh, since you have been following it quite closely today. Sorry, there is some noise behind me. I'm not killing anyone yet. <laughs> um, so, yeah, sorry, Daniel. Uh, what, uh, what are the news uh, from this, the playpen today? Any, any new snaps, any new exci exciting stuff? Yeah, we've been landing a, a couple of snaps today. Um, one of them was 2048, um, which was a really nice test case because the branch, uh, the repository basically just consisted of one file, which was the QML file. So getting that to work uh, on local uh, machine was easy enough and getting it to build as a snap was easy as well. Um, we had a very long and very useful conversation with the upstream developer of Q own notes, which is uh, a brilliant note taking app. Uh, it does markdown, it does previews, uh, you can sync all your stuff on, on, um, on own cloud. It does loads of other things as well. And he was very helpful with, with his feedback because um, his CMAX set, setup was a, was a little bit more special. So we, uh, worked on Snapcraft to fix this. Uh, he got um, he, he wanted to get Snapcraft uh, Snap builds on Launchpad working, so he helped a bit with that. Then we figured out some stuff in the store. So um, it's really interesting to see that with more and more projects which start using Snaps, uh, we run into these niggly small edge cases. Um, and I mean that was supposed to happen. Um, having worked with with Debian and Ubuntu packaging for the last 10 years. It's exactly the stuff that is that is happening there. So um, sometimes people use CMake and Make and a combination of them, and then something happens in a subdirectory, and you need to adjust the build to, to work with that. And we're figuring all of this out, how to do it uh, in, in Snapcraft elegantly, and that it works across distros as well. So, and all without copy and pasting crazy amounts of, of code, but 
just declaring everything in a in a nice uh, that that YAML file, which is which is very nice. Um, yeah, I also had like loads of conversations today with the with the SnapD developers, and it's interesting to see how it looks like their their uh, workload, what they're looking at, uh, is also changing by the experience upstream developers have. Like you can maybe talk a bit about that. Like um, like they've been working, or you and the SnapD people have been working with the VLC people, right? Um, yes, actually, uh, the VLC people gave us feedback on the interfa interfaces we had available for the VLC Snap. Um, such Can as you uh, talk a bit about interfaces. What what do they do? What are they there for? Yeah, so interfaces are a bridge between your Snap and the OS. So if you need uh, to play sound from a Snap, you need uh, the snap you need the you need to have the snap declaring that it, it that it needs sound and when the snap installs it connects to the sound interface of the system and that pretty much the case for everything even for uh, displaying your app on the screen there is an interface for this for accessing your documents for a bunch of stuff accessing the network is an interface as well and uh, with the new SnapD, which is what powers Snap, um, which has landed uh, this weekend, I think, uh, we have a new um, a set of new interfaces that um, help the VLC Snap work much better and is now pretty much on par with uh, other types of installations. So, for example, um, with this new release of SnapD, you have an interface that grants you access to the camera. So no VLC in a Snap can access your camera and stream and stream it. Um, there is also an interface to access uh, your DVD player, which is kind of useful for VLC. And um, then as well, an interface that allows a VLC to connect to the sound menu uh, if you're desktop as any kind of um, player, audio player control somewhere on the desktop, either the Zoom menu in Unity or any kind of interactive thing like, like this. Um, now it integrates with VLC. So yeah, that's the kind of feedback uh, the Snap team is looking for and has been pursuing. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, worries, no worries. I think it's fun. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm going to paste a link to the blog post about uh, this release on IRC. And you will see uh, there is even a VLC screenshot um, running in a snap. And it's pretty cool because initially, everything pretty much worked out of the box. And now with these new interfaces, um, everything actually works out of the box. So it's a nice experience. You can try it um, very easily. You just uh, type uh, snap install VLC, and it will install. It's uh, the package is a bit bigger than uh, the Debian package because uh, there are still optimizations that are needed. But apart from that, you should have the, pretty much the same experience. We have some good news when it comes to size of snaps. Uh, we're not 100% there yet. Like, there's still one small fix that needs to, to uh, land in 16.04. But um, very soon, we're going to have content sharing, uh, the content sharing interface, which will allow us to Say okay, um, everything needed to run GTK3 apps or Qt5 apps. Uh, we're going to put that into in, into one snap itself, so other packages can 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 pull this in and don't need to to bundle like very very common uh, functionality. So um, this has been requested for a very long time. It took some time to to get it just right, 
And uh, as I said, like I think it's a snap confine which needs to 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 land in in 1604. And with that done, um, this should all work, and we're going to have nice, tidy, small snaps. And um, we're obviously going to to blog about this and, and let you know how, to, how you can make use of that functionality. Oh, that's very cool. So uh, it looks like it looks like we have. Um, at least one question, which is a recurrent one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Bluegafish is asking, any update about the Unity Hub? Do you have an update, Daniel? I personally don't, but I think the last time I took a look at the uh, hut branch there was some small updates or something I I can't remember I'm going to take a look now um, I personally haven't been following uh, the, the HUD at all I'll just have a look <laughs> okay um, still on the topic of snaps next week we have a sprint in Germany so a sprint is uh, gathering of uh, developers from Canonical and from the community. And in this case, we are inviting a lot of um, upstream developers as well. So upstream from distributions such as Elementary, OpenSUSE, I think. Um, we have someone from Fedora. And perhaps someone from Arch. Um, and we have also upstreams, um, well, maybe, since we were talking about VLC, maybe for from VLC, but that still needs to be con confirmed. Um, what else? Let me look at the list. Do you know, Daniel? Yeah, maybe just a word on, on uh, in, in general, on, on sprints and how they work and, and what's happening at the, at the Snappy Sprint. So basically, uh, bunch of engineers, a uh, couple of managers, bunch of, of random people who are uh, somehow associated with the, with the subject. They all arrive in the same place in a, in a hotel and they um, or in a conference center and they um, talk about all these things. They hack together, they discuss things and um, most of the evenings end up in some bar and they have a couple of drinks. Um, in this specific case of um, Snappy, we're obviously going to have um, Snappy people there. We're going to have security people there, um, people from the store team, um, people from the community and, and marketing team. Um, so basically uh, covering everything from Snappy itself to the build tools, security, um, store documentation, how do we explain this? Um, how do we get feedback? How do we bundle it? Um, so this is a, a really good opportunity uh, for, for everyone to share what, what, they're, what they're interested in, what they would like to see, what they think it's, is important. So um, I think it's, it's going to be a very lively discussions. And Mark is yeah. going to be there as, as well. And it's always good fun to hang out with him. I agree, and I actually have missed um, some important guests, uh, Debian, KD, Kubuntu, Mate. Um, I think it will be very fun to have all these people in the same room. Oh, Mate, of course. <laughs> um, so it's going to be a lot of fun to be there. Um, I think the, the outcome of these prints are going to be very interesting because uh, we are asking both for feedback and for more active participation. So if you see changes that brings compatibility to more distros, to better integration with, with different desktop environment, uh, should be the outcome of this print, so it's it's really great and it's an important meeting to have. I agree. Um, like 
I personally see SnapD and Snapcraft as as the the answer to the questions we've been getting for I don't know how many basically since Ubuntu started. Uh, we've always had people come up to us say, okay, how can I get my software into Ubuntu? How can I get my updated software into Ubuntu? How can I get my closed source app into Ubuntu? And it was always hard and complicated and it didn't make sense and there was a lot of process and not enough reviewers. Like there were a lot of problems and um, if you look around all the other um, Linux distributions or, or other kind of app stores, they were basically basically facing all the same problems. And um, like, I personally feel that SnapD and Snapcraft right now are at a, a point where, where, it's, where it's good to, to get feedback and, and see if, if we're really going into the right direction of, of solving all these problems. So that's where how I personally see, see this print. Okay, looks like we have uh, a few more questions. Yeah, and connected to the, because the hub question comes up all the time, I would be really interested to hear uh, what people's expectations are, like what do you want to see in the hub, or why is this so important to you, or is it just a meme? Maybe it's time to revive the crazy designs that uh, popped out uh, where, where is the, when the hub was introduced. I remember this crazy design with um, like color controls from from escape, um, color pictures and settings in the HUD, that kind of things. That was a bit crazy, <laughs> but, but that looked great. And I think that made uh, quite an impact on people. Um, okay. Well, at least it, it did on me. Uh, I'd love to see the HUD coming back in a, with a loud bang. So you would like to, your basically the controls of your phone to look like the controls of Starship Enterprise or something? No, but um, I'm on my desktop to have like common settings. Just oh, okay, right. Just there. Well, most app settings are available here because they usually have like a, a menu shortcut, right, to access them from the HUD. But I don't know. I just like the idea. Uh, on the phone, maybe it's a different story. I'm not sure how I would like this crazy, this crazy pop-up, but uh, yeah. Do you know if it's discussed on the Ubuntu phone mailing list, maybe? Um, I'm not sure, not not recently, as far as I know. Okay, but, uh, guys, bring it up on maybe, the Yeah, that's a topic you, you should bring up. <laughs> So, question. Belugafish is asking, does everyone agree that Dealback is a doppelganger to baby Jesus? With that summer, summer white Easter mustache. Okay, I have no idea who baby Jesus is. <laughs> Me neither. I feel like I missed something. But you do have a great mustache, so. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, there is a, a, seri a serious question next. Please talk about any planned EOS and all Ubucons. I'm trying to put up my most serious face, but no, it, it doesn't work. Okay, so EOS uh, is Ubuntu Online Summit. Um, we I remember that the at the last EOS we talked about making some changes to the online summit. Maybe it's time for us to to get back to that discussion and see how things are going. Because uh, let me see, we're in July now. We're going to have the release in October, so probably beginning of November would be the time for where we would normally have our next online summit. That's still some time to go. But um, if we plan to make some crazy big changes, we probably need to to revisit that again. So. I would suggest to to hang in there for now. Um, so that's for those of you who are new. US is uh, Ubuntu Online Summit. That's basically where we discuss uh, the direction of the next release and everything. Um, the feedback from the last discussion session was basically that we wanted to um, to have more frequent and and uh, 
ongoing planning. So more live discussions all the time and then see how we can adapt the format of, of the US to something that suits the, we just released, here's all the great stuff that is happening, uh, atmosphere. That's at least how I remember it. Yes, same here. Okay. And uh, beginning of November should also be the time of uh, UbuCon uh, Europe, I think. Uh, so this year it's in Germany. I um, don't remember exactly where. Do you? Yes, it's in Essen, which is in the Ruhr area, so not far from uh, Cologne, Dortmund, all these cities. Um, yeah, it, it should be should be easy enough to uh, to get to. Um, if you go to ubucon.org, um, you're going to get um, you know the times and dates and and how to get there and also link to the um, to the schedule. Um, I think they're still looking for for speakers. So if you have a workshop you would like to do or a talk you want to give, um, that's probably the best time to 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 approach the team. Uh, but they already have like loads and loads of speakers. Um, David and I are going to be there as well. Um, I'm going to give a talk about about Snappy, obviously. Um, maybe a workshop. I I haven't decided yet. Yes, I'm looking at the list of speakers, and um, the lineup is quite impressive, actually. So it's going to start with a keynote from Jen Silber. Nice. He's the CEO of Chemical. Um, then a few uninteresting people. Then we have um, we have actually someone from Microsoft to talk, to talk about uh, Bash and Ubuntu on Windows. And um, a lot of a very wide range of topics. It's uh, quite impressive. Um, I'm kind of amazed about the lineups I've been able to put together. It's mostly driven by the Ubuntu German local. And wow, that's that's a good job. So. Uh, if you can be there, uh, I would really advise you to try it because we're going to have a great time, I think. Sorry, I was just looking at the ubucon.org uh, page because I couldn't remember off the top of my head if, if, if there were other events planned. Do you know of any, any others? Um, oh yeah, um, he's Ubucon LA. Ubucon. Yeah, LA stands for Latin America, and it's going to be in August. So just in three weeks. That's oh, in, indeed. Right. That's in Lima, in Peru. So if you're going to plan to go to Peru anyway, or you're a Peruvian, uh, make sure you 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 have a look what's what's going on there. And yes, the Peruvian team is a very active team, and um, the events are always packed. So make sure you get in touch with them or try to know about the event quite quickly because I'm sure it's going to be packed. Brilliant. So, next question. Um, Beluga is asking, I'm a Gaelic translator. How do I get involved and what link do you have for me of the wiki? So, first of all, for any questions related to getting involved somewhere, um, the place is community.ubuntu.com. Um, it talks about translations as well. Um, yeah, I would suggest to go there because it, it, it also, it doesn't just link you to the page where you can go to uh, have a look at the first strings and then translate them, but it also links to you on um, documentation about uh, translation guidelines, um, how do I interact with the team, and so on. So um, that's probably a, a good resource. 
um, all the all the translations happen on on Launchpad. So whenever let's say a, a new uh, new packages is uploaded, a new version, uh, it will it will check which new strings are available. It will uh, also take a look which other translations are available in other projects in Ubuntu. So you don't have to translate the same string uh, a couple of times. So um, that's what we get to run that. Let's see. OK, the next question is um, about what's happening with 32-bit Ubuntu um, concerning the Ubuntu LTSs. Have you followed up on the? Uh, have you followed the discussion on on the mailing list? Not very closely, but um, as far as I know, is that we don't know yet because we are looking to support the most people possible, and we are trying to assess if it's still uh, relevant to support um, thirty two bits. So right. to be fair, I don't know. Yeah, neither. So the discussion is still ongoing, as far as I know. Um, whenever you have multiple architectures, um, so so whenever you you have a new combination of of things to try out, um, it comes with a cost. So you have um, testing, you have build failures, you have uh, instructions which need to be different for different uh, setups. Um, so there's there's like loads and loads of things to to consider before before you ask uh, for for uh, you know one option to 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 still be supported. So that's probably where some of the discussion is is coming from. As more and more hardware today just supports 64-bit out of the box and is what you would install by default. Also to take advantage of more um, like more RAM on your on your on your machine. On the other hand, there are still 32-bit um, uh, binaries and, and, and libraries and stuff which would need to be um, supported. And there's still some, some um, older hardware which doesn't quite cut it yet. But I would imagine that um, installing the old LTS and supporting it for five years would probably help in this regard. I don't know. That's just stuff that comes to mind when, when, uh, when considering the subject. Um, I think the discussion is happening on the Ubuntu Devel mailing list. So if you subscribe there, you should get all the updates and you, should, you could also get in, um, you know, get involved in the discussion as well if you have something new to add. Another question. Any update with the GNOME 3 panel for flashback Ubuntu? Flashback fallback desktop environment when you when Unity seven crashes. Well, I haven't seen Unity crash in uh, a very long time now, and may, I don't think I've seen this. I don't, I don't think I, I've seen GNOME two or GNOME three in like two years. So I don't know. My sister still has a very old installation on an old laptop. Whenever I boot it up because she still has some data on it or something, I'm, I'm greeted with the you know the old panel. Um, so there's at least one machine still running it. Um, yeah, I don't know if if it does it need any new updates or are you are you waiting for some new features, or yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Oh. Uh, so. That reminds me, next week I'll be um, actually on holidays at my mom with a, lot, with a desktop running Maverick Meerkat. Is that still supported? I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> so I know what you're going to do in your, in your holiday time, but at least one yes. or two updates, right? Just one or two. <laughs> it's going to be fun. So next question, um, 
when can we expect to see greater security feature on the phone uh, for the full disk encryption, SIM card lock, etc. I don't know about any of these. I really don't. I don't know either. Um, I'm not sure what SIM card lock is. I think there is a SIM card lock because, well, no. I think that the, one of the security features we have right now is that if you mistype uh, your passport several times, you are locked out for a certain amount of time, increasing. And at some point, I think it um there is a risk, not a risk but uh, the security feature is that it erase your personal data i'm not sure if it's right i've never tried it actually but uh maybe i should give it a try i'll report on you next week <laughs> you're going to have a very busy holidays <laughs> right okay um, any update on overcoming the Android bootloader for devices that use Ubuntu Touch with a native Ubuntu bootloader for, like, the Fairphone 2? I have no idea what the which bootloader the Fairphone 2 uses. Do you know? No, I don't. I would, uh, assume, I would assume that they're using Android as well because that's their default choice on the Fairphone 2. Yes, that's like, yeah. Um, well, oh, Michael Ho is in the chat. I think he will provide an answer to this, since he has been following quite closely the Fairphone 2 story. That's right. Question. How long does it usually take for canonical store sell items to arrive at your front door after you press the store buy button? Have you had a good experience on the UK dispatch team in terms of postal times to deliver? Um, I do know that the UK dispatch team is quite efficient. Uh, so the delays would be more on the side of actually shipping the item. Um, but it's uh, quite a long time well, a long time ago, I've bought, I think it was a mug from the store. And it wasn't longer than anything else you would expect. Uh, a couple of days, maybe. A week at most, I'm not sure. Yeah, it was it was similar similar for me. Uh, it's also been a while, because the, the last times I had something transported, uh, somebody came from the London, London office to a sprint where I was going as well, so uh, I even got around the, the shipping costs, uh, so that was even more immediate. But uh, in, in, in the other cases, um, it was it was pretty quick. So the same as elsewhere, basically. And we have another question from Beluga Fish. Yeah, we do. How do I zip up a folder or set of files? on Ubuntu Touch so that it can be unzipped using Windows 10 or Windows 2003 server edition. And my call is suggesting to use gzip from the terminal. I don't think we have a like a packer, unpacker kind of app yet. Well, uh, maybe we do. I'm just going to look in the store to see what we have. but. Um, Yes. Um, Archive manager or something. Maybe we are. Right. But in any case, uh, gzip from the command line is a very good answer because it's, it's very fast and just compress uh, things extremely tight. So it's a good candidate for this. Yeah. Like gzip and, and tar should, and are definitely going to be installed on there. Yeah. Okay, so um, a query for zip in the store um, doesn't seem to give anything re related to actually zipping and, and zipping files. So, yeah, come online for now. 
and Mike, Mike says that it's it's like a good project for somebody to to get started. Yeah. Okay. Um, Beluga Fish is also asking, how difficult is it to get an official certificate signed by Mark Shuttleworth to, to state that you are now an official community member for new members in launchpad.net? We have one? Haha. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <no>, Sorry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Daniel is trolling me because um, I'm not an uh, Ubuntu member yet, which is quite ironic because I've been around since maybe eight, nine years. So uh, I don't have the answer to this question. <laughs> right. So what I would like to suggest is that everyone who's been asking about the HUD every single time in every single show now, can we please change the question to asking David, when he's finally going to become a Ubuntu, I think he deserves it. Um, right, coming back to the question at hand. Um, the process is actually quite easy. Um, if you go to wiki.ubuntu.com slash membership, there should be, or one of the sub pages should talk about uh, how it's done. I think it is just about sending an email to somebody. And sometimes it takes a bit longer. This is because um, Mark is basically constantly traveling the world. Like if you look at his calendar, it's it's pretty crazy. Um, so it, it sometimes just takes a bit longer until he gets you know the new certificates. He can sign them and then they get gets them back and they get posted. And sometimes he's just incredibly busy. But um, the community team were, were quite good at, at at going on his and other people's nerves. So that's what we've been doing if the if the queue has been getting too long. And um, we've, we've basically shipped them to all kinds of places around the world. So um, if you're an Ubuntu member, you should totally get that certificate. All right, looks like we are out of questions. At least out of serious ones. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Your your last chance to 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 get your questions in. Uh, otherwise, we're going to wrap it up a bit early. I'm just trying to think of any other crazy news I could talk about on in in Snappy Land because that's what basically I've been focusing on for, or most of us have been focusing on for the for the past few months. Um, well, I do have a question for you. Um, so, what do you feel about um, the way uh, Snapcraft, which is a tool to create snaps, how it has improved um, in the last few months? Because actually, as a team, we have started to use Snapcraft to try it and to create demos and examples and trying the craziest things you could think of. Um, and when we started using it, it was pretty bare bones. So how do you feel about the improvements? And yeah, yeah uh, it was, it definitely was uh, very bare bones. Um, <clears throat> so but even half a year ago, I would say, um, if, if you started building something, it, it could happen that you would just, it would just basically explode in your face. It would just try to, to build something and then it would give you a Python trace back and that would be it. Nowadays we have like um, good error messages very early on. So if you do something wrong, it, it will just tell you what to do. Um, there's a few things which I would like to see improved. For example, the, um, so whenever you make a, change to your snapcraft.yaml file that it would auto detect like in which step of the build process do I just need to retry you not so you don't have to you know manually clean the step and then you know do that thing I think that's one of the last bits that are missing for you but I know that um, for some of the more um, not obscure but the you know 
for some of the programming languages, we, we're still missing a, a, a plugin, or um, in some cases, there are special settings where you um, look at, you know, just part of the build and you just want to get that done, or you uh, some um, upstreams use like a special environment variable to to set some things to to get the to get the build done. Um, I think that's what we've seen elsewhere in 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 the open source world that every project does things just slightly differently, just a very small thing that that doesn't quite work as as with the other projects, and. Um, I have the feeling that we're at these, in a lot of cases, we're at these finishing touches right now, where we're um, getting those fixed. But in general, um, I'm, I'm very happy with, with, with how it works. And it's, um, if you understand like a few of the, of the, of the key concepts, like um, how to define the parts, uh, how to define the apps, um, which build steps are involved, like once you've, understood those um, it's it's actually quite quite easy to get started so I'm I'm, I'm super happy and and um, it's also if you want to contribute to it it's, it's written in Python it comes with a really nice test suite so um, yeah it's good yeah same here um, so it looks like we have a few more questions um, do Beats headphones work in Ubuntu for HP devices, laptops? I don't know. I don't own Beats headphones. It would surprise uh, me if they would do anything differently than other headphones. I'm quite sure that they come with a just a very regular headphone jack, like the 3.5 millimeters headphones, jacks, and they all do the same thing. But I Although, yeah. personally haven't tried them yet. Uh, maybe I can provide some input. Um, my previous laptop uh, was an HP, and with uh, onboard Beats uh, speakers. And as far as I remember, everything was working. So I don't think it will be an issue if you, if you try it. And um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the next question um, is also quite interesting. It's uh, the question is, is Bleachbit available as a Snappy app? So for those of you who haven't used Bleachbit yet, it's basically a tool with which you can um, you know, remove leftover files and, 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 and old copies of something. Like, it, it figures out, like, how to, to uh, you know, remove the cache from your browser or uh, compact database files, that kind of thing. Um, and the answer to that question is no. Um, and it's, it's quite obvious. Like, even if you run Bleachbit as a normal user, it won't be able to install, let's say, um, log files, old log files in slash var slash log because that's just something the the admin admin users can do, and you you see the same thing with with snaps um, because snaps can only look at um, you know they, they have their own basically their own small reality where they can work with the files which are just uh, supposed to be used by that app itself. So um, giving an app like that kind of privileges to, to look over the entire hard disk, that's actually stuff we, we would like to, to avoid, or um, there would need to be like a very special way to do this. But I can't see this happening with, with, um, with snaps right now. Yes, or do some very minimal cleaning um, be almost nothing because that's yeah. a point of snap actually that's they can't really touch deep in the system and uh, they are confined yeah Nick there is a question I'm not sure I fully understand 
uh, where in the world is RMS? So Richard Matthew, Matthew Stoneman. And what GNU Savannah or non GNU Savannah program are you familiar with on a day to day basis? Um, I'm sorry, I don't have an answer to this question. <laughs> right. So I don't know where RMS is. I guess yeah. he's still traveling the world giving talks and doing stuff. I'm not following his work that closely. But um, I mean, we all rely on, on loads and loads of, of uh, new tools every single day, um, be it the <clears throat> compilers or whatever else like um, I think we're all, we're all uh, familiar with those because we can just move on from here yes. like we all recognize how how important GNU is um, set three uh, actually from a BQM 10 which is cool uh, so I found out something something called Cordova today since since an Ubuntu Insights email. But what is that really seems? It's a way to make cross phone OS apps. Yes. So um, Cordova is um, an open an open source framework uh, that is used to make um, portable apps, cross platform apps. Um, there are some apps that use it on the phone. I'm not sure exactly which ones. I don't have this in mind. But um, we actually do have documentation on how to make Cordova apps. Uh, actually, the documentation to make Ubuntu apps, it's in, Cordova, it's in Cordova itself. So if you look up the Cordova documentation on the web, you will have, uh, you will, you will have a way to just add Ubuntu to the list of apps it can generate. So if you know about Cordova or are getting started with it, um, know that it's very easy to uh, include an Ubuntu, for, well, for Cordova to generate an Ubuntu click package. Very nice. Here's a question which is a bit unrelated to Ubuntu, but it's about uh, third-party charitable Firefox extensions. So basically, stuff you install, and whenever you do uh, online shopping, it will, you know, uh, generate a few cents for that uh, charity. Um, I don't know. Like, I find it uh, obviously like there's, there's enough charities I I support and I think are worth supporting, but. Um, I think it's better for you to, to uh, get informed and, and find your own charities and, and see if they um, provide that kind of um, Firefox extension. I, I think a lot of them do these days. So just try it out. With that, I think we've come to an end of, of this show. Uh, next week, I'm not going to be there. Next week is the Heidelberg Sprint, so maybe there's going to be a Q&A from the Heidelberg Sprint, which would be nice. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll inform you uh, via the, the usual channels. Thanks a lot, yes. David. Do you still have some, some closing closing remarks? Okay. Yes, I do. Um, if you are um, also interested in Snapcraft and Snaps, uh, we also have social chan channels for this. That's one. Um, it's a snap, a Snapcraft.io on Twitter, I think. Um, and uh, Snapcraft on Google Plus and Snapcraft on Facebook as well. Yes. yes. Or Snapcraft.io on Facebook. Yeah, it depends if you use the URL okay. thing or the, the name. But you, 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 should, you should find them there. Yes. So um, we are trying to provide a daily stream of news and everything, well, everything going on in the world of snaps. And these days, it's quite a lot, actually. It's, uh, it's a lot to, to follow and to learn. So it's a good idea if you're inter interested in these topics 
to follow these channels. And um, there is also, of course, a Snapcraft mailing list. Uh, you can find on snapcraft.io. Uh, there is a lot of very cool discussion going on there uh, from people from various um, areas of interest because that point of Snapcraft is to make these people come together to work, to work on the next tool everyone is going to use, or at least we hope we are making this tool. And that's why we, are, we need your feedback to make the best tool we can. Yeah. And that's it for me. Uh, I probably won't be on air next week uh, because I'll be um, on holidays. But Very nice. um, maybe, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, thanks a lot, everyone, for your questions. We're still on, on ISC for some time, so here's up there. Uh, we'll see you some other Tuesday. Take care. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.